Oh. Is that you moments ago? Oh yeah. It looks just like that too. We had Mexican for lunch. Oil doesn't normally just leave a film on the funnel like that. No. That's a dirty, dirty filter there. That's solid dirt. We have just made a discovery. It's now saying when he resets it, that'll put the right day, but then you see the odometer's in kilometers, so it's 166,772, so a little over 100,000 miles. So that last one, that was at 65,000, that was at 65,000 kilometers, which mm -hmm. is... Like 40, 50,000 miles from around in there. So really it's been 60,000 miles since it's had its last oil change. That explains why the oil filter looks like a piece of, you know what, <laughs> Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my 2019 Maserati Levante, which was the cheapest in the USA. It was a bank repo with a lot of miles, 104,000 miles, despite being a 2019, and uh, well, it wasn't very well maintained. The engine was listed as sludged up, and there were lots of other issues. But the biggest issue right now is the smell that is inside the car. And much to the detriment of my mental health, I actually do read most of the comments in my videos, and the first comment was, you paid way too much for this thing, a little over $30,000 for a Maserati that like this. And well, have you been shopping for a car at all in the last year? Uh, if this were a Chevy Equinox, a 2019 with 100,000 miles on it, they'd still want $30,000 for it. That's just the world we live in, and this was a fantastic deal on an SUV that would have been $90,000 new. And the other comment was with the smell, which I'm a very innocent person, so I had no idea that the smell of ammonia or cat urine is the exact same smell as uh, some illegal substances. And then I started putting things together and realizing this car may have had a very, very interesting life before me. Now, I should say there are a lot of you that leave nice comments, and when you do, I really appreciate it. Uh, but in this sense, you're actually educating me because I didn't know that certain illegal substances smell uh, like this. And the smell is very concentrated when you open up the rear hatch into this spare tire area. Uh, it's uh, really, really bad, and it is very concentrated in a place where you would hide illegal substances if you were uh, smuggling them in your Maserati. Additionally, you saw the B pillar where the seat belt strap is as falling apart. That would be another place where you would hide something, which makes sense why that would be taken apart. Now, I hadn't really looked inside here very much. I knew there were some personal items, and well, I did, and there were some weird things in there. Let's just call it that. And I called a friend of mine who's in law enforcement and asked him what I should do with these things that look suspicious, and he said, just throw it away. There's no reason to waste a police officer time with a report and paperwork and all the trouble just so you can make a YouTube video to see if there's, well, stuff in your car not confirmed. It is actually a methorati. And so I did follow his advice. I put on some gloves and I cleaned all the stuff out of there. There were some other personal items that were quite interesting and, well, moved on with my day, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to take this thing up to the car wizards and hopefully rid it of another vermin in the engine, a bunch of sludge, because while this car was being ran with who knows what in the back, uh, they weren't changing the oil. So the engine, which is Ferrari derived, a Chrysler Ferrari kind of mashup into, well, actually a pretty good engine, uh, does need some TLC. So let's head up to the car wizards. And also today I'm going to figure out, well, which SUV I'm going to get rid of because this puppy's here. Yes, yeah, so I'll buckle my seatbelt with this contraption beating my head. I had to put air in the tire. It was completely, completely flat. Not quite enough, 31, enough to get me to the wizards. And now we have a new issue here with my windshield wipers. It only works on high. It just stops right there wherever you turn off the switch at. So you kind of have to time it to get to the bottom, but you need it when it's raining. So it's kind of annoying. That's the Chrysler parts for sure. There's a lot of Chrysler parts in this thing. The push button start, uh, the infotainment screen is right out of a Chrysler. Uh, a lot of things. So anyway, 2019 car. Let's get us to the Wizards. Wizard! I keep looking out the window and seeing this car. I think my wife's here, but then it's you. Is that a disappointment or are you excited? Oh no, no disappointment. I'm excited. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't see this video. It's flushing time. Yes, Roto-Rooter, time to flush. Hmm. So I got this here. Huh? If you want to get the get the 
Bob, turn the water on. I'll go ahead and. Slide. That's. Uh, you're gonna give some bad advice to somebody, and they're gonna actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't. The, that is not an engine flush. So. No, this is not an engine. Flush. What is an engine flush? It's this. Awesome, BG EPR, Engine Performance Restoration. Yes. So BG is actually a local Kansas product, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of them by now, but they have a lot of stuff. This isn't a paid sponsor or anything like that, but nope. uh, maybe we should get out your colonoscopy thing and see the before inside. Yeah, huh? let's do that. And then we can pour this in. Do you have to run it for a while? Yeah, I have to let it run like 1,200 RPM for a while and uh, let it do its job. Yes, the, the Teslong. Teslong. That's like if you combine forces with uh, Elon Musk and Tesla. David Long and Tesla. Yes, it'd be Teslong. We always joke in the shop that it's time to get the Teslong out. Oh boy, it is very phallic, isn't it? And it's very long, too. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, it's in. It looks pretty gunky. It's not bad. Here, let me see that Teslong. So the audience can view. It is... It's it's got a film everywhere, but it's not like chunks of stuff. It's just a light film. Huh. Well, that's part of the reason why I got this thing so cheap is because the oil level was low. It's throwing out the warning light, and then they said it had sludge inside, which I mean, not yeah, not terrible. I guess we'll see before and after what yes. this uh, BG stuff can do, huh? Yes, let's do it. So you run the car for how long? We'll let it run for probably 20, 30 minutes, and then you shut it off and you drain the oil and do an oil change. Okay, well, that probably gives us time to go clean ourselves out, yes? Yeah, you have any ideas where we could go? Mexican. Mexican. La Fiesta. Oh, yeah. Crack open a beer there. Something you don't want to drink. <coughs> oh, that, that, is, that is very strong, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, not as strong as what's inside the car, which... Okay. We're so innocent, wizard, that we didn't realize that smell could mean illegal substances and not like a cat peed in it. Yeah, I thought a cat peed in it. But no, no. It didn't cross my mind. There's a, uh, yeah. Anyway, I filled you in. Oof. Well, the instructions say up to about four or five quarts to use one can, but I know these take like nine or ten, and it says if it's more than that, use two cans. Okay. So we're going to put two cans in. You would think that uh, people running illicit materials would want to maintain their vehicles better because they don't want to be on the side of the road have an encounter with the police but I don't know maybe the priority of money expenditure is not balanced ah uh, they, they're wanting to consume their own product right now. yeah maybe they were on their own product while mm. they're trying to sell it too that's why I always said I was a terrible car salesman because I was like a drug dealer doing too much of his own drugs which I just wanted to keep all the cars thankfully I have YouTube now and so anyway we run this thing yes push the Dodge Tart start Not blowing up yet? No. Will I leave it? Yes, leave it. You have Daniel's son here to turn it off. Yes. All right. Mexico. I'm I'm stuck. Well, that was a very satisfying lunch. Um, did the Maserati have a satisfying lunch as well? You can see it's all orange. A lot of that stuff's been melted off now. It's not all gray and sludgy. Okay. So now we drain it? Now we drain it. Get all that. All that stuff is now in the oil. Now we have to drain it and get that pulls it out of the engine. Oh, that was a flat Levante. Was I, I thought I heard a Levante. <laughs> it was a wet Levante. All right, we're going to put it up. I'll be right back. Maybe we should have gotten an Italian instead. Yeah, I'm thinking I might need an oil change here pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was good though. So, I think a panel just fell off there and a panel needs to come off here. Yep. That one? Yep, I'll go get a tool. Cool. Ah, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta Wait. go. His turn. All right, well, see if I can find a drain plug on my own. Well, Wizard pulls his drain plug. Um. I absolutely cannot. So where is the drain plug? Oh, there. Oh. Well, a light would have helped. Okay. Doesn't that just drip right onto the... Yeah, I have a little green funnel thing that we can use, but yes, it does. On these, it just drips all over the frame. Well, that definitely seems like Italian engineering right there, doesn't it? Yes, and I feel much better right now. <laughs> I had good. my BG flush. Very good. That's your funnel? 
Looks like a big green leaf. Uh, uh, something, yeah. yeah. All right, so that funnels the oil down to where it needs to go. Yeah, you put it up in here. Okay. Nice, you have a little waterfall. It's gonna be a chocolate waterfall. Oh! Is that you moments ago? Oh yeah, it looked just like that too. We had Mexican for lunch, as as you know. Look how nasty it is. That oh. definitely definitely was a good flush. Yeah. That is some dirty, dirty oil. Oh my goodness. It kind of sounded that way too. Oh, <laughs> sure it did. Oh no. Oh. Well, hopefully that means that it's no longer inside the engine. Yes, well it's not, it's right here. Look at the film it left, all that gunk. Yeah, oil doesn't normally just leave a film on the funnel like that. No. I need to clean up. You got... Got any Charmin? That, <laughs> you got full, uh, yeah, two girl, one cup on the dang Ooh. Maserati. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. Ugh. Oh dear. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. It's on my glasses. Well, you're cleaner, but yeah. You know, this kind of came to me while this was splashing all over the place. Every time I'm at your house and your kid is watching Blippi, this is all I see. We're sending people down a Google rabbit hole right now that we really shouldn't, Wizard. <laughs> so yeah, when Blippi, the child entertainer, was a shock comedian before. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, this is is drained it's yep this disgusting look at that it leaves a trail it's uh not probably the worst one you've ever seen but pretty bad huh yeah it's pretty bad all that was inside the engine that was really bad well the methorati has left its mark on the floor and wizard now you need to put a filter in and fresh oil huh fresh oil yes now let's see if i can find the filter on my own i cannot it's up high yeah is it Right there. Just hidden in there? Mm-hmm. Once again, very Italian. Very Italian. So this isn't the kind of car you'd want to take to a Jiffy Lube type place, huh? No. They'll break all of these lines. They'll break stuff. I'm picking on Maserati a little bit, but serviceability is definitely a secondary thought when it comes to engineering of pretty much all cars now. Mm-hmm. Why make an oil change like this? Why put a bar in the way of where the oil would drain? And all this stuff that, this car's a 2019, but it's all gonna get fragile and be very breakable it within will. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna snap the end off of, say, that coolant expansion tank, or it's like some electrical stuff. Okay, that's a Dirty, dirty filter there. That's solid dirt. Oh, oh my no. god. <laughs> He's all dirty again. He's gone for his third flush. The first was self-inflicted, the other two have just been from this Maserati that's still it's still squirting. Look at that. Still giving it what she's got. Oh my goodness. Here. That is sad. That's solid. That is the sludge. Mm-hmm. Pulled it all out of the engine. So I imagine that's the number one spot to catch it for from that detergent. The filter would catch it all. Yep. Which is why you don't want to run the engine for more than 20 minutes after doing this, huh? Right. That's <laughs> the, the smell too. That detergent oh, still in there. Wow. Okay. Nasty, isn't it? Well, what's the new filter look like? Oh my. Wowza. And I have two types of oil you get to Jeez. choose today. You okay. Want, you want liquamale or castrol edge. Oh, this is going to trigger an argument. I don't I don't want to have an opinion and then have half the people hate me. Because it's like worse than politics, talking about what oil type you prefer. I, just pick one. I don't I don't want to know which one. Just, just pick one. All right, maybe I will reveal just because this oil says supercar on it. Got a supercar. Need supercar oil. Supercar. Mm-hmm. It's a Ferrari, basically. We're cleaning up my stupidity from leaving the oil cap off in the first video. Now we can see what's under this plastic, too, which is just a lot of vacuum and electrical ugliness. Yuck. 
But cool valve covers though. You don't see many cars having metal valve covers that are stamped out like that. Nope. Maserati. Looks like it belongs on a Maserati from the 70s or the 80s or something. It's cool. Mm -hmm. It really is cool. This is actually a California T engine with two less cylinders. Yeah, there's some people that say that, like the heads and things is like built by Ferrari, but they say the bottom end's sort of like from a Jeep Wrangler or something. The blocks sort of design. I don't know. There's a lot of conjecture. I wish someone Italian would tell us for sure. Well, the Ferrari would have a flat plane crankshaft. This one's cross plane. So it's a it's a marriage of Chrysler and Maserati, two cars known for their amazing reliability. This and one, build quality. This one's made 100,000 miles and still... <laughs> of, of neglect, yes. Yes, well, you do need to give the car credit for sure. Hopefully it likes this flush more than we liked our flushes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of the sludge. The last of it, all gone. We hope. Hopefully they didn't just all send it into the, like, the little turbo lines or something like that and clog them up. <laughs> No, I don't think it did. Well, one last little thing before I go. Wizard was going to reset the little wrench light right there and then add a little tire pressure. And then I have no lights, but he was going through uh, to reset it. And it gives you the last service, which on this car, 826 2020, when the oil was last reset, and that was at 65,000 miles. So, what is that, 35,000 miles on an oil change? That's the longest oil change I've ever heard of. <laughs> Oof. So. Pretty bad, but yeah, 21, 44, and 65. That was their oil change intervals on this car. One owner, clean repo, drug runner. We have just made a discovery. It's now saying when he resets it, that'll put the right day, but then you see the odometer's in kilometers, so it's 166, 772, so a little over 100,000 miles. So that last one, that was at 65,000. That was at 65,000 kilometers, which mm -hmm. is... Like 40, 50,000 miles from around in there. So really it's been 60,000 miles since it's had its last oil change. That explains why the oil filter looks like a piece of, you know what. <laughs> Oof. We good? Yep, she's all full. Oh, great. I guess there'll be more to do. There's a few little leaks and things and mm -hmm. i definitely want to change the wheels because they're ruined and 19 so kind of small they look weird on so your here. wife is 20s or so yeah 20s. yeah got that trim piece as well and then the smell needs to get out before the smell it, is it bad. festers too bad so i guess i'll take it back down not that i could take anything anyway because everything's broken but the range rover that's the one well i basically have two unsellable suvs right now because this one well <laughs> we now know the story on it mm -hmm. and that's going to be a, a tough one to Sugar coach, I imagine. Already a 100,000 mile Maserati is going to be tough. And then this one, it has that suspension error code that just will not go away. So you're still fighting that. Yes. There is actually one, one that seems reasonably fixed enough that I can sell. I have well, three luxury SUVs right now. So oh. I can get rid of one. Yes, here it is. My cleanest, most functional SUV at the moment, the ML63. And since it's clean and functioning, I guess I should sell it. It did give me a little bit of a hard time, but over the last month I've been daily driving it. It's been flawless. Now that it's getting a little hot outside, the AC feels a little weak though, so I'm gonna drop it off at the Ninjas to have the AC topped off, but also uh, because the Ferrari 355 is done. So I'm very excited about that and a little sad to see this one go. It is in very, very nice shape, unlike the other two cars. I know some of you emailed me before with interest in it. I'll try and get back to you because now I am definitely ready to let this thing go or, or am I? <sighs> I'm seeing double yellow. Look at the top. All right. No holes is always a good thing. Where are you going? You promised me a ride, so. Oh, you need to test drive the top to make sure it doesn't fall off? Yes. I, I, I totally understand that. Yeah, let's go. Well, Ninja was saying it's not entirely finished. This I top think. needs to sit out in the sun and bake and stretch before you put on one screw back there. Yes. A little bit of cleanup, but no holes. Nope. How bad was it? Do you hate me? No, I hate mine. Mine was a pain to do. Yeah. Compared to this. So you'll live. Oh yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm curious what you think. 360 versus 355. I love the, this the one. The 360 was my old car. 355, the experience it offers, it's so, so, so different. So old school and the noise, we'll hear it in a little bit. I love Better it. than the flat 
heavy paddles. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. One thing I regret, I regret not doing is like I, I should have painted this one. Oh, well, you know. We can take it out. It's just one that's, dollar paint right here. That's just part of the patina of this car. I really appreciate you doing this. I know you're not an upholstery guy, but I knew you had experience with yours. So it's yeah. like, right guy. So very good. Very good. You didn't stash any drugs in this thing, did you? Thank you for watching.